All right, and welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. I wanted to show you something pretty cool today uh, as far as a new upgrade I received on my 7800. So I want to tell you a little bit about a history of things. I've been searching for quite some time to get good uh, quality video out of my Atari 7800 here. This is my, my primary system here. And it's been quite the challenge. Uh, specifically, as some of you know, I've got this large flat panel and I've got a pretty complex AV system that I use to interconnect things, including, although it's probably not going to show up, I've got a S-Video to, comp to composite to HDMI converter box that's uh, strapped here in the very dark corners. Again, doesn't look like the camera can see it. Um, and then it all ends up eventually going to a single HDMI out of my receiver to my TV. Anyway, so it's always been a challenge to get really good quality results from the 7800 in regards to good quality video. So the first thing I tried was a simple composite circuit mod that is uh, available, widely known, and I had uh, bad results with just, it just was real fuzzy and blurry and the colors just never looked right. And I eventually sold that 7800 off to someone else that was looking for one. And then they complained that even on their CRT TV, it was generating horrible jail bars, which I didn't experience that on the TV I tested here at my house, but it just goes to show you not all TVs are the same, and certainly not all 7800s or the modifications that are made will appear the same on each TV. So it can be a challenge. So then I upgraded to this little guy right here. Now this is a pretty complex mod board known as the Longhorn Engineer Mod. And it combines, uh, it gives you compone or composite S video and a refreshed or cleaned up audio circuit line, uh, and it worked pretty well. The composite was decent, although I still had bad jail bars on the edges and lots of color fringing or color bleed, and just kind of fuzzy and detail was lost in both composite and S video. But strangely, if I connected both at the same time to my AV system it actually looked better. It was really weird. Now, having said that, on CRTs, normal tube TVs, it looked really good, and I was pretty pr impressed with it. But still, since I do a majority of my gaming on that thing, I was never quite happy with it. Additionally, this is a fairly complex mod to install. It requires having to desolder this uh, hex, hex uh, buffer chip, I believe is what that is right there, and you can see that after I did that, I, I had to find a um, socket to reinstall it with in case I ever had to change things out and I wasn't happy with it. I've gone through a lot of different mods, so I've tried to make things easy to change out in the future if I need to. Uh, in fact, the 7800 has been through a lot. It's even got a replaced TIA uh, on it, which is for 2600 compatibility and also controls the joystick controllers in both 2600 and 7800 mode as well, so interesting that is. Anyway, so yeah, the Longhorn Engineering mod, it was uh, fairly expensive. I want to say about 40 bucks or so to purchase this. And again, kind of complex. you got to remove some chips. you got to put these machine pin headers in and stuff like that. And quite a few wires. And additionally, probably the biggest complaint everyone has is that even with this mod in place, in 7800 game mode, if you don't install a separate switch, like you see here, then what happens is you get interference lines uh, from the 2600 color signal. So you have to install yet another switch externally on the case that allows you to shut that on and off to get rid of interference. It's kind of a pain in the neck. So it was never 100% happy with this, but it was at the time about the best I had found. Then, about, uh, I guess maybe not quite a year ago, I learned about this one. And this as it implies on the board, is the Magic Knight 7800S video modification board. Now, this is actually uh, created by a guy in uh, the UK, and, uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time holding on to it, and it's a simpler installation in that it doesn't require any components to have to be removed off the 7800, and basically, you just have to solder these little wire leads here directly to spots on the uh, main board of the 7800. And, uh, so that's the good thing. It's fairly easy to undo it if you need to, and in fact, I did here. And then all these wires here went out to all my other video connections. Now, this board, like the Longhorn Engineering one, also has audio filtering. 
uh, as well as just S video only. So that's the only negative about this is that it's strictly S video. There is no composite connections to come off on this. But it produced pretty good results. The S video on this was sharper and clearer than on my Longhorn engineering mod, but I still had issues with color bleeding, especially with the blue color hues. And uh, some games were very notorious of showing this, like Commando and uh, Dark Chambers. Plus, I still had gel bars on the edges, and it was just driving me kind of crazy. But you can see that it's a much less complicated uh, PCB, and uh, much easier to install, because you don't have to do any permanent modifications to the 7800 to use it. Which brings us to today. Now, about a month ago, I guess it was, I learned about another mod that was being developed and uh, had learned about it on the Atari Age boards. And it is called the UAV. And it's created by Atari user Brian, spelled B-R-Y-A-N. And he's actually here in the States. And he developed the UAV, not specifically for the 7800, but for the Atari 8-bit computer line. And the reason why it's called the UAV, and I've, you know, I like to call it something else, but I believe its official name is UAV does not mean, in this case, unmanned aerial vehicle or drone. It actually stands for Universal Atari Video. I like to call it the Ultimate Atari Video, and I'll explain why. But here is the PCB for that. It is super tiny. Everything is small surface mount components on this thing and yeah it's it's really small so it can be kind of hard to solder onto but similar to the magic knight board uh, you only have to attach wires from direct points off this board to specific points on the 7800 main board so you don't have to do any permanent modifications or removal of components in fact, even on the S, even on the Magic Knight S video board, it's still recommended that you cut or remove the RF circuit to prevent additional interference. With the UAV, you can still leave the RF modulator intact and it won't affect it at all. Because what this does is directly capture the video signals off of the video chips inside the Atari and puts them through a new series of buffers and encoders and gives you separate outputs. So basically this is completely isolated from everything else in the Atari when it's used. So it, it's not subject to the other interference. Um, and as you can see, he's got this cool little picture of a drone there on the bottom of his board that says UAV. Now, this board is also really small. I know you can't really get an idea of it with it in my hand here, but I'm going to show you some examples. So we're going to place an Atari cartridge right here. There's Commando. Now here is the original Longhorn engineering board. You can see that it's a pretty decent sized board and when it was installed in the 7800 it took up quite a bit of space. Also stands up pretty tall because of the extra pin connections it needed. Then we have Magic Knight's board which is smaller as you can see uh, and it was easier, took up a little less space and then we have the UAV, which is half the size of the Magic Knight board. Very tiny, very small. Again, because of surface mount components, there's, there's virtually nothing to this as far as thickness goes. Now, you have a couple of options when you order this. Uh, this is essentially the bare assembled board. So you basically have to solder your wires directly to the tiny little holes you see here. I opted to spend a, an extra buck so that I could get the basic board and this solderless connector. Basically this just fits into these pins that you see here. I said solderless. You still have to solder the connector to the tiny little UAV board but it's solderless because all of the video output lines are on here and you can just take the leads the wire ends off of your um, S-Video composite circuits and just put them inside these holes and screw them down to secure them so it makes it easy to remove and take the board out if you need to um, aside from the solder points that you have here but when installed it really doesn't take up much room at all as you can see here 
Now you can see that I've got mine uh, actually installed and sitting in place of where the RF modulator used to be. That's because again, the previous two mods that I've used required the RF modulator to either be cut and made deactive uh, or just remove it entirely. And I figured if you can't have the RF modulator active anyway, then might as well remove it because it makes a perfect place to install these mod boards. So originally uh, my uh, Magic Knight board was in that spot and now my UAV sits there and you can see that like the Magic Knight board I spoke of it just connects directly to resistor point locations uh, on the 7800 yeah my soldering is not the best on this I'll be honest um, my hands are getting shakier and shakier by the month anymore it seems like so it's becoming more and more difficult for me to solder anyway Additionally, this 7800 has been through a lot. Uh, a lot of those resistors have actually had to be replaced because the Longhorn Engineering mod required you to remove uh, about a half a dozen different resistors off the board or cut them loose or what have you. Uh, and then again, the UAV does not provide audio uh, cleanup, but I already had taken care of that previously. You'll see that if you can look there, there's a couple of resistors that are pulled up on, off the board with two wires coming off of them. And if we follow and follow and follow and follow, you'll see that they're attached with a capacitor on the end. That's for filtering. And then eventually it goes to my RCA outs right there. And there you can see my S-Video and my composite. Yes, it's pretty tight in there, but there is room. Even with the shield, all this fits. But that's about the best that I was able to do without resorting to some of the other locations that people add the jacks, which is usually to the bottom and side of a 7800 case and I was never that impressed with that. I've always tried to keep the connections on the back end as much as possible but with the audio it just wasn't going to be possible to do that so I ended up having to put them on the top of the deck lid like you see here which makes their connections stick out down there and then you can see the S video and composite right there on the back of the support. Anyway so yeah Really happy with this. Uh, I'll take uh, some additional video footage to show some quality of the video, both composite and S-video off of this, as well as some still pictures for some better close-up details of the installation itself. But yeah, real happy with this and uh, stay tuned.